I remember when I was in school, just as a student, I wondered if it was possible to paint realistic without reference. Something completely fictional, something that completely wasn't there. Can you paint that to a level of realistic believability? I could tell you that the answer is yes, because that's what I've been doing. For half of the jobs I get, it's for live action film or it's for very realistic sometimes photo real illustrations of fictional things. So in this video, I wanna give you the stepping stones on how to achieve that and how I achieved it as well. Many people nowadays know me as being a painter. Back in school, that was a totally different scenario. I was far more comfortable and familiar with drawing. So how did I learn how to paint? And how did I learn how to paint things out of my head that don't exist in real life without any reference? It's not gonna be an easy formula, but this is exactly how you do it. First, if you're doing any studying, if you're doing any copying, that's going to be very important. You want to copy from other artists, their art. You want to copy from photos. You want to copy from life. And then you want to create out of your own imagination. But it's how we're copying. That's the important part. You want to copy to create something that has the essence of the thing that you are copying from. Now, in the end, hopefully it looks exactly like your subject. But what I'm saying is that when you paint, you don't want directly copying as your goal. You're not trying to match angles. You're not trying to match proportions exactly. You're trying to match the feeling of the thing in your own recreation, your own creation, right? So every brush mark that I put down on my page when I'm studying in this way, I'm thinking, how do I create this thing? Rather than my subject looks like this, can I match all of the little aspects? Because that becomes a copying game rather than a creating game. And we're looking to create things that are totally realistic without any reference. How do these paint marks make sense? Why are they there? Why is it there in that photo? Why did that artist simplify everything and just represent it like this? Right? These are the thoughts that would go through my head and slowly, slowly I start to understand why those decisions were made. Next thing is learning how things work. That is extremely helpful because especially when we are looking to create based off of a subject, we need to know how that thing actually works. What are its limitations? How does it walk? How does it run? How does it sit? How does it take in the light? How does it eat? What are the funny little looks that it might give you? What's its personality like? How does this thing work? Now for me, as I'm talking about this, I'm thinking about a character or a creature. But we can also think about these things as a tree, as a building. How does the building actually work? How do people come in and out? You know, all these things you need to wrap around your head in order for the thing to truly feel believable. Then learning what's inside the anatomy. If we know how it works from a functional point of view, how do the different parts make that movement or function possible? Think about it like this. If I brought home a bag of groceries, I asked you to paint that bag of groceries and you didn't know what was inside the bag, how well could you paint it? Versus I show you all the contents in the bag, now I put them in the bag and now let's paint it. Now you know exactly what is behind the curtains. And a lot of times when we're dealing with, especially dealing with anatomy, where it's very specific of how things work, how things connect, things need to line up. You might see one thing poking out of the form, and you might see another thing poking out of the form. And if you knew what was inside the anatomy of that thing, whatever that might be, a car, perhaps, you know, person, creature, thing. If you knew the anatomy, then you would know that those two things are the opposite ends of something else that's inside. Maybe it's a bone, right? Maybe it's a pipe leading from one section to another section, only revealing itself in certain parts. And that's why learning what's inside can be extremely important as well. What is the anatomy of the thing that we are trying to paint? Next, learning how light works, because that's the only reason that we can see the thing that we're seeing. It's because of light. No matter how dark the object is, no matter how dark the environment is, if there's anything to paint, that means that there's light in there somewhere. Also with light, it can get very complex because then there's the type of light source that you have. One light source can create very soft shadows. Another light source can create very hard shadows. So learning about the different types of light, the different colors of light, and how they react to different surfaces 
different materials, different atmospheres becomes essential as well. Light doesn't just help you to make something feel realistic. It also creates a mood. So you can use lighting almost like a secondary character here to give that whole entire scene a mood. And we see this all the time in films where you might see a little girl's bedroom. And by all other reasons, it should feel like a nice, friendly, happy room. It has toys in the corner. It has a little bed with cute little blankets on it and so on and so forth. But the way that's presented is kind of haunting. One that recently comes to mind is the drama series, The Haunting of Bly Manor. Two little kids. It shouldn't really be that scary but because of the lighting, because of the music, because of the atmosphere, all sorts of other things. It made it very creepy sometimes. So knowing how light works doesn't just make your scene realistic and believable, but it can really tell the story as well. And it could bring a huge influence into the art itself. And many times this can have a huge influence on the decision maker, the producer, the director, the art director, whoever. Because whether you're working in television, video games, movies, they are all trying to tell a story of some sort. So the whole entire idea of story needs to be part of our design, our painting. The next thing that you need to definitely have under your belt something that I see is constantly missing in portfolios that I review, is learning how the texture will take the light. Is it highly reflective? Is it subsurface scattering? Is it somewhat translucent? If it's metal, what kind of metal is it? There's some metal that's extremely shiny. In Jonathan Hardesty's Understanding Textures class on Schoolism, he explains all these different variables when it comes to any texture. And he shows examples of how some metals are super reflective and then others are completely not. And he understands how light reacts to these various materials. And that's a huge component of why he knows how to paint realistically. Next thing, this one is a big one. This kind of umbrellas everything that I was talking about, but it's to learn how to design the various aspects, right? So it's like how to design the anatomy because without reference, all of a sudden you are not locked into certain proportions, certain shapes. You can design it and you should design it. Designing the light, like I was mentioning before, you design it a certain way, it feels like a romantic scene. You design it another way, it feels like an alien scene. And this actually reminds me of painting color and light with Tonko House course on schoolism. That is literally one of the assignments. You're painting this room four different times with different lighting situations creating different moods that was extremely helpful and a wonderful exercise that i did as well and learned a great deal from well now animated films games they also use very realistic lighting for many of them i remember watching moana and just commenting to a friend just saying wow these look like little dolls just running around jumping in the water, you know, climbing things and so on and so forth. They just look alive because all of the lighting was so realistic. Now, when you take this painting, it's obviously not supposed to trick people and make them think that this is a real creature and it's hunting this other real creature in this grass. But I did want to create something that was completely without reference where we can show realistic lighting and realistic textures and so on and so forth, completely from my imagination, just to show that it's possible. Now, if you want to get to this point as well, I invite you to join me in the live streams. I do them constantly, every Mondays and Thursdays on this channel, 6.30 a.m. LA time, 9.30 a.m. New York time, as well as many other videos sprinkled in between. It's totally free, as well as our LBX Discord channel, the Lightbox Expo Discord channel is completely free as well. We have a wonderful community in there that's very much about encouraging, helping, teaching. And many of the people in the Discord channel use Magma Studio to paint so that they can all paint together, encouraging each other to keep going. By the way, I use Magma too to paint with Masei Seki and a ton of other uh, guest artists along the way. Because Magma is 
a free program that you can paint with up to 30 other people at the exact same time, you're literally painting with somebody else on the same document. So when you get tired, you see the other person, the other person's still going and it makes you wanna keep going. It's like having a buddy system when going to the gym, it just changes everything. So I highly recommend that as well. And lastly, if you can, definitely take advantage of the Schoolism sale right now. As of this video, we have an amazing sale where you save about one third of the price of an annual subscription to Schoolism. An annual subscription gets you access to every course on Schoolism, kind of like Netflix for artists. So with one subscription, you get access to 40 different courses taught by some of the most amazing, amazing artists in the industry. I also have a class on there as well. And I put in my knowledge and the way I paint into my course as well. So three suggestions, live streams, Mondays and Thursdays on this channel, join the Lightbox Expo Discord channel. The address is in the details of this video and take advantage of the Schoolism sale. Now, if you wanna do anything for me, you don't have to, but I would appreciate, as always, leaving a comment on the video, sharing it with your friends, and make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you can find your way back. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys next time.